So that's been a very long intro, but let's dive back into our history tour uh, because we don't have to worry about traffic on our virtual tour here. We can skip back and forth um, as we see fit. So we're going to do this chronologically. Uh, let's start with the silent era and then we'll move through the 30s, the 40s, the 50s and hit every decade um, to the present day uh, each time with some heck raz tips. We don't have to go very far to get the very beginning of the first Hollywood blockbuster. Um, in fact, we're already within walking distance. Uh, so let's grab that one here. Um, if you've ever been to Hollywood, you may have seen this really strange looking gate with the white elephants. Um, it's a reconstruction of one of the biggest sets ever constructed. It was over a mile long. The film was called Intolerance, which is a fitting name given the producer's history, uh, and it was filmed back in the silent era in 1915. Uh, what you see here, this is one of the gates of Babylon. Um, Babylon had some very impressive hydraulic engineering, like the Hanging Gardens, which was one of the wonders of the ancient world. Um, watch episode two of the Full Momentum vodcast if you want a description of some of the hydraulic engineering feats around the Persian Empire. Um, well, what if you wanted to do something similar here? and uh, bring in some fountains, uh, make these into aqueducts. Um, can we do that? Uh, we've been highlighting some capabilities of Hecaraz, but I think it's also equally important to highlight the limitations so that we choose the right tool for the job. And with all of this talk about 3D, with a 3D viewer and everything, we need to realize we are still in 2D. And when it comes to terrain, each point within the plane can have specific values. And that value can be a depth, a velocity, an elevation, a shear stress. Um, like we saw with the waves here, you get one value for every coordinate. Same thing with the DEM. So if I wanted to get water flowing flowing over the top of this in either direction, um, like an overflowing bridge, like if this was a bridge and it was coming over the top of this, or if you had an aqueduct going alongside it laterally, um, like some of the Roman aqueducts that route water right across the top of a river valley, you only get one water surface elevation. And you know, you can't put a hole in it and have uh, a double uh, water surface elevation, you know, the, the one on the top and the one down uh, going through the opening. Um, and I've done this in a couple of previous videos, um, but you'll need to combine one 1D and 2D hydraulics, um, even if it's entirely inside of a 2D model. Now, Chris and I talked about this uh, a bit in one of our previous uh, webinars, and again, trying to get flow routed underneath where you have a top water surface elevation and a bottom water surface elevation um, is something that um, it takes a couple of hacks to be able to do. But what we can do now uh, in HECRAS, if this were a bridge opening uh, in version 6.0, is we can put this right into a 2D model with any shape that we want. So let me zoom in on this one, um, onto the terrain data. Uh, and again, this is where we saw the dam breach model coming through. And um, if I had small enough grid size, this would have blocked the flow. Let's say we wanted to open this up and allow the flow to go through this structure. Um, so how do we do that? Well, let's um, have a look now at um, our 2D options for putting a bridge into a 2D area. What I'm going to do first here is um, make a break line um, along the center of the uh, bridge deck here. Um, and so that's going to get uh, a name. I'll call this uh, Babylon. And then um, once we've got this, uh, because I can't do near repeats uh, here in uh, the geometry viewer, we're going or editor, I'm going to go into RAS Mapper. I just <laughs> noticed that you can actually see the Hollywood sign right through there again crazy the detail that you can get out of Google Earth. So um, opening up RAS Mapper, here it is. Um, if I start editing that, um, I can also then edit its properties. And um, as the near spacing, we want to make sure if I've got this in the terrain, I want to make sure that the face uh, cross sections are far enough away from this. So actually, before I do this, let me just measure how big this thing is. And at this point, it's going to be uh, 16 meters across. Um, just for kicks, I'm going to uh, assume that this one is uh, a 20 meter structure. And you may want to get it a little closer than that, um, but I'm going to make it a 20 meter deck width, which means I want one cross section 10 meters from that, and then the upstream one can be another 10 meters away from that. So I'm going to give it a near spacing of 10. Uh, near repeats, I want at least two of them. 
and I'll just say OK. Let's see if it can interpolate out to my master resolution, which is actually very coarse on this one. So when I enforce the break line, there it is. So let's have a look at this once I stop editing this and uh, go back into the geometry viewer. Um, then I should be able to um, see these uh, right here along this break line. So what I'll do now is just convert this break line um, into a uh, 2D SA area connection. So when I pull up the geometry viewer here, I should be able to click on this and you've got this handy little feature here, convert this break line into a new internal connection. Um, and so I'll keep the name the same and there it is, but it does not yet have the correct dimensions on it. First thing I need to do is click on this now, edit the connection and I want to make sure I call this a bridge. So this is the exciting feature that we've been waiting so long for. Uh, we're changing that to a bridge. Now first thing I need to do for it to cut the sections correctly is to go in and define the deck or the roadway. And again I need to make this one 20 meters uh, wide. Um, to span the whole structure that's in the terrain and you could come right along here if you take it out of the terrain first um, but then I'll give the upstream uh, section a 10 meter spacing. What that'll do now um, when I plug this up um, or turn that off is um, to show us now that our grid cells uh, the cell faces line right up with our four cross sections. And so when I go into this structure here and uh, look at the bridge, um, you can now see all of these um, faces. Now, if I go into the internal and external cross sections, uh, we will need to put uh, N values in here. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to show you is um, how you can make um, these uh, any shape that you want uh, inside the bridge itself uh, by modifying the deck uh, or the roadway uh, on the editor here. Now, I'm just going to copy and paste these values in since I've already figured out what they need to be and to save some time. So here they are just a uh, quick copy and paste while I wasn't recording. Um, and so now when we do that, let's have a look here at um, some of our cross sections. Now in the center line, it's just uh, interpolating between these outer two cross sections. Um, but what you'll see here, um, that's the shape. So let's see, did I match this? Okay. Um, let's have a look again at Google Earth and see how we did. Well, it's uh not an exact match, but again, the, the point is that you can uh, make any shape that you want down here and up above. Now, I don't know that you'd be able to put these things in there. If anybody has any tips or tricks on how to do something like that, um, go for it. Let's see what kind of hacks we can come up with. Um, but at this point, again, anything that you can do for the lower or the upper deck, um, any way that you can define that, the piers can have any shape that you want. Um, these are things that we could not do uh, in HECRAS before. And especially down here at the bottom, um, we didn't have the option at um, of having a varying terrain there uh, inside um, a culvert, if that's how you were going to fudge in uh, a bridge in your 2D area. So uh, this is great uh, that we've got that capability now. So uh, continuing on our movie history tour, um, this is the silent era pre-1930. Um, the let's let's uh, look at the first couple of Oscars um, best picture winners um, for our next stop. The very first Oscar and the very last silent film to win best picture Oscar at the uh, that was at the end of the 1920s. It was actually filmed in Texas, um, so we won't go there today. Um, the second one um, was called uh, Melody. What is it? Broadway Melody. It was a musical, um, and it was filmed in a warehouse at uh, MGM. It's now. Culver Studios, um, and I think the uh, sound stages are all gone, so there's really nothing interesting for us to be able to see here for flood modeling. Um, but uh, let's move to Oscar number three, uh, which is the adaptation of the novel All Quiet on the Western Front. So we'll come back to Culver Studios in a few minutes, um, but let's uh, first head over to uh, one of the filming locations for All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, this may look familiar to you from some other movies, uh, but for this one right here, I think this was uh, before they actually paved it with concrete. 
the battle scenes that you see here um, were actually filmed in the bed of the LA River. Um, so let's see, what can we do uh, to try to uh, use one of the HECRAS tools to do this? Um, could we make little basins and uh, craters uh, in our terrain? And yes, that's very easy to do now. Let's pull up our geometry editor to show you how we do that. Actually, this will be in uh, RAS Mapper and not in the Geometry Viewer, sorry. Um, what we're going to do then, um, let me just point out, first of all, a couple of these terrain data sets, um, as I mentioned before. If I grab all the return points for the non-filtered data, this is how it comes out with some no data values. Now, if I wanted to modify the riverbed, um, I could go in and replace these no data values. Um, I also, though, have a filtered data set available. I showed you that link uh, previously uh, in, in the last uh, episode. And um, But it's all filtered, so it's got buildings removed. If I want uh, both of these and want the no data values replaced, all I did here was put uh, this one underneath on the hierarchy and stack it with this one above and then it takes uh, the buildings where there are buildings um, but replaces the no data values with the filtered data um, where that applies. So let's make some uh, further modifications to this if I just zoom in on uh, the ground there and let's assume this is made out of dirt and I'll just take this and add some new modification layers and the shapes that I'll make here for craters are circles or ellipses. Um, actually, let me check the elevations first and make sure that I put them in at uh, something that's reasonable. 64 meters above sea level is where I'm at right here. So if I right click on this, add a new modification layer and put in my polygons, uh, or sorry, my shapes as circles or ellipses, um, I'll call these craters and I can put in uh, whatever size craters I'd like here. Um, 10 meter radius, that might be fine. Um, at an elevation, let's go down to say 60, and I can do other ones as an ellipse, and uh, let's do that and give it one minor radius, and uh, they'll make this a different elevation. I can put that in like that. Um, I can put another one in here, and let's rotate this one 45 degrees, um, and I can put them in, you know, as I see fit here. So with that, um, I'll just uh, cancel this, and um, we'll 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 run this, and I'll just show you how this uh, looks. Again, if I just put a um, uh, a cut line through these, then we should be able to see uh, these craters show up. And again, they come out with uh, vertical side slopes. Uh, we'll show you a little later on how we can do some shapes that are a little more complex than that. So if I now run my flow over the top of that, um, you'll get some uh, energy losses in there and uh, you'll get some storage. Um, basically made myself some detention basins. Now to round out the 1930s, um, toward the end of the 1930s, uh, there's a very famous movie that was filmed. I told you we'd be going back to Culver Studios, so let's have a, uh, a look there. Uh, this one was released uh, in 1940, so this brings us into the next decade. Gone with the Wind was uh, filmed here. They built uh, basically a backdrop for all of Atlanta back here uh, and then burned it to the ground. Um, they had massive movie sets out here. Um, it's a Wonderful Life. The whole town was built here. Um, Wizard of Oz was on a soundstage um, nearby. Um, pretty much the whole thing was recreated indoors. Again, that's not real interesting from a drainage perspective, but what I wanted to show you here is, again, just um, getting into some of the basic uh, terrain modification tools that we hadn't covered in previous previous videos. Uh, let's just pull up RAS Mapper here. And again, one of the things that um, just because I can, um, but now I'll take this five gigabyte La La Land uh, topo file, this terrain file, and I can just clone it. Um, and it does not need to make uh, uh, another set of files on my computer. So this uh, ends up being very efficient. So I'll just uh, call this one Culver. And um, now I've got uh, La La Land Culver down here. I'll turn the other one off so that I'm only looking at this one and we'll go ahead and update the legend with view which tends to turn off and I'll turn off also my map layers so that we can see uh, where the building ought to be if I wanted to put this in and build it into the terrain.
So again, just replicating what they did back in the day. Uh, here's the building, um, you know, building up these buildings, and then they built a massive uh, piping system, first of all, to bring the gas in to burn the town to the ground, and then also for the fire suppression system. So if I wanted to uh, put in a perfectly rectangular um, building in here, I can add this new modification layer. I'll go for a rectangle, and I'll call this uh, Culver. And we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, you can, you can pop this in here at first. Let's make it a rectangle. Let's make it, say, uh, 50 meters in the X, uh, 20 meters in the Y. Um, on the elevations, um, let's make this uh, 60 meters high. Um, and then uh, we can rotate this. I'm not sure what that rotation angle is there. Maybe say 20. Uh, oops, sorry, negative 20 is what we want to do. Uh, what I want to show you here also is you can always edit these and go back to edit the uh, modification. And let's go with minus 20 and it'll go the other way. So looks like I need to go a little bit farther to match that correctly. And we'll have a look at the elevations as well. I think the existing ground is around 30. So maybe we need to change that as well. Let's make that an elevation of uh, 40. And we'll rotate it, say, 27 degrees. And um, anyway, <laughs> we can line that up a little better. But uh, we can put anything we want into this terrain. Uh, there it is, comes up and back down again. This will now obstruct flow as long as there are cell edges inside of the building. So to round out the 1940s, uh, let's go to the movie that uh, probably brought us more classic quotes uh, than any other movie you can imagine um, about troubles not amounting to a hill of beans, rounding up the usual suspects. Uh, here's looking at you, kid. We'll always have Paris. Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, Bogart and Bergman in Casablanca. Now, a good chunk of this movie was filmed inside a sound studio. I think that's a cardboard cut out of the airplane in some places. Um, and they've done some interesting tricks with the perspectives. Uh, but some of it was filmed at the Van Nuys Airport here. Um, the hangars are no longer there. We do have some hangars there, but we're going to rebuild the ones here. So let's make a little more complex shape uh, than we did before and see if we can put those in. Um, here's the RAS map review of it. And uh, I think these are the hangar locations there. This is is now the DEM that's been filtered out. So these have been removed. Um, we'll put some new ones in uh, right in here. Now, how would you make a rounded shape like this? Uh, maybe you've got a better idea than I do, but I'm going to go ahead and make a control line uh, that just comes up and back down again, uh, like the top of a hanger. So I'll use the same cloned uh, layer that I already had, um, just because I haven't run anything on it yet. Um, and I will add a new shape to this one as a line, and we'll make it high ground. So this is basically a levee that slopes up and down. We'll call this one hanger. And so now it automatically takes me to the editing screen here. And on that editing screen, I can just go ahead and I'll draw a line down here. This is the center line of my uh, path. Uh, let's make this one 50 meters wide. And if I make the maximum extent the same as the top width, then it just ignores these side slopes and becomes a vertical, uh, vertical curve. Um, for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in some values here. I'll work out what a curve would be. Uh, 116 wide. Let me just pop this in here and uh, use Excel to copy and paste. Well, it's not perfect, but uh, there it is. Good enough. Um, so let's see what this looks like uh, when I hit OK. Well, there it is. So I can now cut through my terrain. Actually, this should probably be a little wider. Uh, plot the terrain profile. You can see it goes up and back down. Uh, and then across this way, it's just a vertical wall coming up and back down. Okay, so there's an airplane hangar. Um, if we wanted to do another one, we can just go back in here and uh, do the same thing. If I click my arrow here, I should be able to draw another one on this side. And I'll just copy and paste the same thing into these ones. Uh, and again, uh, if I edit this one with the top width, let's make this one a little more realistic <laughs> compared to the other ones. And we'll make it 200. Actually, I'll just show you. If I make this one wider and bring it down at, say, uh, one to one slope, uh, then we'll have some side slopes on the side, like a sloping building. Um, let me just, I'll make this one triangular. And just to show what's going on here, if I take this to 60, and take it back up to, say, 248, which was the top of the other one. Now this is going to be a triangular hanger looking a little strange, but it'll show you some of the different things that we can do. Again, I can bring this in from a shape file. 
um, there are a couple things I can do. Watch out um, if you do change the uh, length of your uh, line there, um, you will need to change this manually. So when I say OK, well, there's kind of a weird looking grain silo type hanger um, if that's what you wanted to build. Now, once I save all these things, I do have a couple of other options available to me. Um, let me just pull this back in and I'll show you a few of those. If I scroll down to the one that I've just made here, I can take these modifications and copy the modifications that I've made uh, to any other terrain. So that's a pretty handy thing as well. Now we're done with the 1940s. Let's move into the 1950s. And of course, uh, here's the classic. I told you we would uh, get back to the Griffith Observatory. Um, and you can see in the background here, one of the movies that was filmed at uh, the Griffith Observatory, along with probably about a hundred others. So here it is in Google Earth. Let me get myself out of the way so you can see the Hollywood sign. And we'll come back to that question. Um, if you were fleeing uh, that tsunami, where would you run? So if we take a look at that uh, catastrophic tsunami coming in, uh, this is the one we showed you in the beginning. Uh, again, if you want to see this in 3D, go into part five and you'll see this one in 3D. Uh, here it comes. Let's uh, again, here's the Griffith Observatory and out here, there's the Hollywood sign right there. So as this comes in and heads up, you can see, even though it's an observatory, you'd think it'd be up on top of a mountain. It's on top of a ridge line. The Hollywood sign, which is below the top of the ridge line, is still well above the flood here. So um, this little island that uh, forms here, if you've got a 300 meter high uh, inundation tsunami zone, uh, then uh, that's where you uh, that's where you'd probably want to be. Now I see one filming location here. If we're talking about the 1950s that has stayed high and dry, probably got about 10 different movies that have been filmed here. Uh, let's head to the Mount Hollywood Tunnel. And it's just behind uh, the observatory. Uh, in fact, you would drive through it uh, to get there and you can see the tunnel here. Now let's have a look at one of the movies that was filmed here, even though it was uh, made in the 80s uh, or initially the first part was made in the 80s. Um, this is actually set back in the 1950s. So yeah, part two of Back to the Future, um, yeah, that's stuck in as an 80s film, but uh, so we'll sneak it in here as a 1955 uh, film because that's when it's set. Uh, again, just to highlight the uh, Hollywood tunnel and show you some of the things that we can do uh, with, with tunnels and with the shapes of these things here. Um, let me just pull up the geometry editor here and uh, just show you in this area. Again, I've got a massive grid size here, which we could refine. If I wanted to put a tunnel in here. Um, these really aren't uh, new tools. Uh, I'll just do this the old way um, as we always have before. Um, I don't think the new uh, bridge tools would necessarily apply here. Um, we'll still want to make this one as a tunnel. So um, first I will draw myself a 2D area connection. Again, upstream and downstream doesn't really matter in this case. You may want to do it right along the roadway here and then we can enforce that one as a brake line. Um, and then with that one here, if I take this one and call it tunnel, um, this uh, again, it's going to snap to the outside of this. I will enforce this after giving it an uh, internal spacing of, say, that goes out to 100. Let's make it uh, 25 and see how many errors that gives us when we enforce that. Um, not uh, no errors there. So uh, again, I'll probably want to break this into more uh, um, uh, more cells uh, in a real model. But um, if I go in here then and edit this connection, you'll see the um, if I could just make this a weir across the top. Sometimes just uh, to make it quick, I'll just take this length right here, 134.95, and just make sure it's up above the ground. Uh, if I know it's not going to be overtopping, um, that way I don't have to worry about it. There's my weir. Here. And then for the culvert going through it, uh, again, just to highlight what we've uh, always done before on these ones, if I call this one the inlet and this one the outlet, I hold control down, double click here. This gives me the coordinates. When I go in here and put my culvert in, I can just paste those coordinates right there. And again, I realize I'm going fast, but this is, uh, you know, uh, something that you can do on YouTube is just to uh, 
uh, pause where you need to and go back and uh, rewatch things uh, if I do get a little carried away on this. Um, I'll put a concrete end value in here. Uh, but for this one right here, let's actually make this one uh, a conspan arch, okay? And then we can see what the span would be, see if we can get it to match. Um, I don't know how wide that tunnel is. Boy, they made it look long in the movie. They did some tricks with perspective. Uh, make it 10 meters across. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, 32 and 36 feet. Uh, let's go ahead here and um, have a look at how high we want to make this. If I make it say five meters high um, for the upstream and downstream invert elevations, we just need to make sure that it's above that point and that point there. Um, I'll just make it easy and make them both uh, 317. So I'll put this one in here, 317 and 317, and we'll have a look at what this looks like now with the conspan arch in place. So there it is, and I don't know if we've matched this very well, but you can see, you know, you can put one of these uh, in place, uh, and that will be the opening here. Uh, let me get rid of that, and, uh, you know, water could go from one in one end and out the other, and it could reverse as well. So um, with that, uh, let's stick with uh, Back to the Future here, because just down the hill from here is the area that um, Marty backed up to when he tried to get his uh, DeLorean uh, to reach 88 miles an hour by the time the lightning struck. So let's fly to the point where he took off, and it is actually just down here, which uh, when, if you think about where the courthouse is, we're actually 10 kilometers away from uh, the courthouse where the lightning hit. So it took him, uh, I think if you figure that out, uh, that's 40 meters a second. Um, and if you gradually accelerate, um, yes, I'm a nerdy engineer, uh, that will take you about 10 minutes to get there. So let me go back in time with my background here to part one. Um, you can actually see the lamppost and the bench uh, are actually still there to this day uh, across the street from the Greek theater in Griffith Park. Uh, let's pull up Raz Mapper though so we can see where we're at. Uh, just like we've done before in any of our 3D viewer tutorials, um, I had to draw a flight path that we can take uh, in the 3D viewer. Um, here, uh, just to orient ourselves, um, down here is the Chinese Theater where we started, Hollywood Reservoir, which we failed uh, with the, the dam there, and um, there's the Hollywood sign, and uh, the Griffith Observatory, there's the tunnel we just put in as a culvert, and now down here at the park. This is where we start. Um, this is where Marty backs up his uh, DeLorean to, uh, trying to get back to 1985 from 1955. So it looks like you've got to get on the on-ramp here to uh, the 101, uh, and as you come up to Universal Studios here, uh, take the off-ramp, come down here, and the courthouse with the clock tower is right about there. Okay, so let's go back to the starting line here. I'll turn on Google Earth so we can uh, get our bearings again. And now I'll pull the 3D viewer up here as well. And let me get myself out of the way. And you can see there the um, Greek theater in both uh, Google Earth and in uh, the 3D viewer. So we'll start out going very slowly. Um, again, we've got to get up to 88 miles an hour by the time we get to the courthouse. Um, you can see our little inset map there showing us where we're at. Um, the terrain does look uh, a little funny here. Um, it's because I'm using a very large uh, terrain data set. Um, even though it's higher resolution, um, you're only going to get so much out of the 3D viewer. So if you want more resolution out of it, um, maybe clip it uh, to something smaller. Uh, again, we're accelerating a little uh, more quickly here. Uh, we'll come back up and see, um, I think as we come around the bend, uh, we'll see that um, flood wave from the uh, dam breach model that uh, that we saw earlier. Um, getting on to the 101 here, the uh, overpasses, some of them look a little funny, again, because they're right in the terrain. Uh, keep accelerating, uh, let's move up here. We've got to get this timed to the millisecond when the paper said 10.04 uh, p.m. Uh, you've only got a millisecond to, uh, to get that right. And we've got to the top speed and probably uh, missed it there. Let's back up a bit and try this again, uh, going a little more slowly this time. Here you can see the courthouse right there. That's where we're heading. Um, there it is in the 3D viewer as well. Um, there's the clock tower. And here we go, starting down the hill. 
and um, I, I don't see the well it, it was a lightning storm but uh, I'm not sure if it was raining very much but um, we'll go ahead and uh, turn on our, our rain on grid as well as we come around here on the bend uh, rain on grid doesn't really look all that great um, in uh, the 3d viewer uh, but yeah, there it is so you can see the clock tower there and let's start back up again and here we go and yeah if we missed it we'll go straight into the building here um, so uh, but one thing I do want to point out here um, there's the clock uh, but just to the right of the, or to the left of this um, what you'll see there um, as we let this flood come and go is uh, that's the LA River down there um, so we're right up against the LA River uh, which we just visited and interesting these buildings here that's just a facade it's uh, you know they look kind of funny because they're so skinny but that is just a facade you can see a much better view of that if I get rid of this and let's then go in uh, ra in Google Earth and we'll go back to the courthouse here um, um, kind of as the bird flies and we'll land down at Universal and see what that looks like and if we can pick out if yep, there's the LA River on the left the clock tower right here um, stuck at 10 4 p.m. Uh, and then those skid marks the famous skid marks that you see running into the buildings here which are no longer there so that's some fun with Back to the Future. We missed our lightning strike, so we're stuck in 1955. But we're at Universal Studios, so there are some cool things to go see here. Um, for the 50s, um, this is a feat of hydraulic engineering um, and movie magic uh, that you don't have to go far to see a little correlation for that here. Um, when I first uh, went to Universal Studios as a kid, uh, here's what the uh, trams looked like. And I remember this one here where you would go right through this lake that you see and it's called parting the waters and uh, let's see if we can actually do that in heck raz so if i pull up raz mapper uh, you can see there's courthouse square uh, there's park lake um, where they uh, run the trams through the water uh, let's just turn this off uh, for the google image and you can see what we're looking at for our terrain and um, we'll have a look here also at uh, what that rain and grid event uh, looks like. Um, this is uh, the same one that we were looking at in the 3D viewer. So yeah, you do get a better view of it here. Um, and the flow is going up to the LA River right there. So I want to just show a couple of uh, things that we can do here with the terrain um, in with this lake. Now you'll notice that it looks a little funny because um, the if I turn off the water, you can see that the bathymetry is not correctly uh, represented in the terrain data set that I downloaded. So similar to what I showed before um, at the LA River, um, I had this data set um, which had no data values in here but had all the ground points and then I had another filtered one that had uh, kind of the bare earth but it doesn't have uh, the bathymetry in it. So one thing you can do um, if you wanted to build your bathymetry into it uh, is to use the old method of drawing cross sections, um, which uh, may be more accurate, uh, but I do want to show you here what I've done, um, which is to basically draw some contours uh, for the, uh, the, the subsurface elevations. So I've got one polygon that I drew here, um, a meter below, uh, another one there, two meters below, and here a couple more, three meters and four meters below the ground that ends up uh, stair-stepping it a bit um, but you can get your stage volume uh, relationships uh, to work out that way and um, get the water to store in it um, you know in, in a fairly uh, quick way and that way you can also use cloned uh, terrains which you cannot use if you're going to use the cross sections with the 1d reach uh, to put the bathymetry in so what if I wanted to work some uh, movie magic here um, and part the seas? Uh, I think the old ride used to go through up in here somewhere and they filled it in. Uh, let's say we wanted to just cut across right here and um, see if we can part the seas uh, the way Moses is doing it here. Well, there's a cool new feature in HECRAS um, now that you can take the computation options and tolerances. And look, we've got gravity here. So all I've got to do is hit negative and now when I do this water is actually going to flow uphill and things will go in reverse like in uh, Avatar in the mountain scenes there uh, where the rocks just float. Uh, I'm just kidding that doesn't actually work but let me show you another little hack that you can do to part the seas. So let me pull the geometry uh, editor over here and I'll show what I've done. Um, I've got boundary conditions where I've brought some flow into this lake uh, but I'm going to put these other ones in here uh, that are the, the Red Sea East and West um, where I'm going to actually suck flow out of the model. And what we can do now, um, this I don't think was a possibility in previous versions, uh, but when we look at this one here with the hydrographs, I can actually put in 
a negative flow and it will suck flow out. Um, there may be some instabilities going on right there as we do that, uh, but let's have a look at the results um, when we do that. So here we go, I'll turn on my results here and let's go, if I just uh, take a section of this and plot the profile, um, let's have a look at what happens when I animate this. And again, this won't be a very stable model, but have a look, oh, look at that there. I've parted the seas. So um, that's, uh, again, a little little trick that you can do now that uh, I don't think uh, was built into the previous versions. And uh, imagine what you can do even on the outflow boundary conditions um, with uh, stage hydrographs and things like that. We can, uh, you can suck flow out um, now in internal boundary conditions as well. So that gets us uh, through the 1950s. Uh, let's move into the 1960s uh, and see if we can find some things to do here at Universal Studios before we make our way around the rest of La La Land. So just up the street here, if you've been to Universal, you might have seen the Psycho House. Now it's a uh, bit interesting if I move myself out of the way here. Um, the Psycho House itself uh, is right next to the, uh, I think that's War of the Worlds, uh, where uh, there's a destroyed jetliner sitting uh, right uh, in the front yard where the Bates Motel should be. So here comes uh, Norman walking down the st uh, steps. And uh, let's uh, pull up Raz Mapper again and just have a look at a couple of things we can do in this area. So leaving off where we were, let's just head just to the south here and um, I'll turn on Google Hybrid and then we can actually see the callouts uh, where the houses are. Um, and you'll see right here, um, <laughs> since we're moving into the 1960s, there's the Munsters house, uh, Wisteria Lane, and here's the Psycho house. Uh, let's uh, zoom in on this one and I'll turn off the aerial photo and let's see if we can uh, make some terrain adjustments similar to what we did at LAX in the previous uh, episode. Now we could add the Bates Motel using some of the techniques that we've uh, done before. Um, on this one, I'll just go in and uh, modify the terrain again, adding a new modification layer. And we'll do a polygon that's a multi-point around the outside. And we'll just say uh, no psycho house. Um, and for that now, uh, it automatically takes me into the editing. And as I come around here, I'll just uh, take out the trees as well and we'll just uh, go ahead and allow it to use the elevations from the boundary at the terrain. We'll replace them all and um, what we'll see then is it is gone. So, uh, and, and again, we covered a lot of those uh, methods in the previous video. Uh, I just wanted to show you a couple of other techniques then um, let's move over back to the Munster's house on Wisteria Lane. So first we'll uh, fly there in Google Earth and then we'll move there uh, in RAS Mapper. And uh, again, just demonstrate a couple of uh, features that might be handy uh, for your terrain modification. So here it is. Um, this is Wisteria Lane um, and uh, the Monster's House there in the uh, foreground. Uh, yeah, obviously this footage is not from the 1950s, uh, but uh, what you can see here is the aftermath of a tornado that comes up over the hills here. Uh, maybe the same tornado that uh, struck uh, in the day after tomorrow and took out the Hollywood sign there. So oops, get out of the way, there it is, um, here it comes. And what I want to show you now um, with Raz Mapper, if we move into the same area, uh, is how we can actually take all of the terrain values and erase them or lower them. Uh, like if a tornado came and uh, took out, you know, like it did with Dorothy's house and lifted it up, uh, maybe put it down somewhere else or uh, put it up higher. Um, just, just uh, we'll cut one of these out and uh, show you that tool. So when I uh, right click on modifications, I'll add a modification polygon as a multipoint and we'll call this earthquake change. And um, we can go in and draw a polygon around the outside of this one. And I think we've hit each of these methods before um, that are in here, except we have not done add value to terrain yet. Um, and when I do that, you can see now if I go to my uh, readout here, the elevations all around the outside are around 200. I'm up at uh, 400 here. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's one of the things that uh, we, we have at our disposal now. And we've now got this, uh, again, this building that could be uh, at a different elevation. And it's got uh, some of the um, 
uh, some of the variations that you see inside of it rather than just blowing everything out. So that'll take us out of the 60s here. So again, that's the Munster's house. Uh, let's try and move into the 70s and see if we can find something around here that will take us there. Um, have a look here at this lake and um, let me just cut a section here through it. Um, I've got a profile line right there. And if I plot the terrain, oh, look at that. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Jaws Lake. Now let's have a look at this one in uh, Google Earth as well. Um, we can zoom in on this one. And here we go. There it is. So um, again, this will take us into the 70s here. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, though, is, uh, you know, again, a couple of limitations with, with Hecaraz. Um, this just happens to be in the terrain. Um, I didn't actually even add this to it. If I turn off uh, my uh, Google Earth uh, layer here, or um, uh, the satellite imagery, this is just some leftover, I don't know if it's from vegetation or something, but I've just cut right through that. So uh, anyway, one thing though I did want to point out is, what if you wanted to see this fin moving across, or you had some structure where something was moving? Uh, I believe that's uh, just a limitation. I don't know of any way that you can get things moving uh, in HECRAS, other than a mobile boundary for sediment transport, maybe in a 1D model, you can move your bed that way. Uh, but you can't uh, take a, a pier or you know a, a fin or something like that and, and move it through your model. You'd need a, a 3D model for that. So as we move uh, out of the uh, you know, 60s and into the 70s here with JAWS, uh, let me just take the 3D viewer here and we'll go from Wisteria Lane um, up along the LA River and see if we can find some other uh, sites that we might want to see. So there's Wisteria Lane, there's the LA River. You can see all the Universal Studios buildings in there. Uh, let's get down a little lower, fly up along the LA River, and again, uh, we could get some better terrain in here if we just chopped it down to the corridor that you see. The bridges are completely in the terrain. Um, as we come across some of these bridges, though, let's uh, deviate off course and um, we'll flood the LA River here and see what happens when we get to some of these other uh, structures. Now that house right there that you see, uh, that is a very special house. Let's fly there in Google Earth and see what it looks like there. So we'll get a lot uh, better resolution when we go there and let me click on it here. We'll back up a bit um, so you can see Universal Studios uh, disappearing out of uh, the view frame there. And sure enough, this is the Brady Bunch house. So let's, uh, and, and I don't know if you knew that uh, the LA River is right in their backyard. So um, let's uh, try flooding uh, the Brady Bunch house and then maybe we'll build a uh, flood wall around the outside to see if we can protect them. So let's open up Raz Mapper and see what we can do. So here's what it uh, used to look like in the background. And uh, let's see if we can pull up uh, Raz Mapper here. And actually, the Google Hybrid in RAS Mapper actually has this pointed out. I wonder if the people who live there want people to know that. But I think they've actually just renovated this uh, the house to actually look exactly as it did back in the day. There's a reality show episode about how they redid the interior to be exactly the same. So what we're going to do here, let me turn off Google Hybrid. And I'll just show you what happens when we bring a flood through here um, as it is. And then uh, we'll make some terrain modifications to it. Now this would take uh, quite a flood to uh, inundate the whole thing, but as we bring this in here, uh, let us get it up and over and uh, at peak flow, let's have a look here at what's going on in their yard. Uh, interesting little uh, backwater eddies here that you can see, a couple of vortexes or vortices, but let's go ahead and build them some uh, flood walls here. So I'll turn off the uh, results and show you just um, as we go down into the terrain here and use these modification tools um, some of the things that we can do to it um, that were really tough to do before this version uh, if i want to add a new modification layer and we'll call this uh, we'll make it high ground and we'll call this the brady levy and so all i'm going to do here uh, is go around the outside of their yard here and let's protect them from this uh, massive flood. What I want to show you is how you can actually just 
overlap just to make sure you've sealed this all up you can overlap these lines a bit um, this is going to look a bit funny though it's trying to do uh, by the default a 20 meter uh, high uh, levy uh, with side slopes um, let's make it a flood wall so let's just make it well, like a really fat flood wall again if i cap this uh, maximum extent here then it's going to ignore uh, the side slopes and you can already see it's uh, tried to do this for me here um, let's get it up above the existing ground um, I'll make the whole thing 185 on both ends um, and again these ends overlap with each other but that's okay because um, you can see here I'll just zoom in on this you know, I could have lined these right up and um, now I've got flood defenses in place so let's run the same model and see what happens with uh, this levee in place so here was our terrain before and then without that um, and when I turn the uh, existing layer off uh, there's my uh, levee so let's go back here then and show you the same flood coming through I'll take it back to the uh, back to the first time step here and let's run this through I'll turn off my water surface and here it comes and look at that they're high and dry so uh, you can see now the flood uh, patterns. Um, a lot of times we're asked to do this and uh, you know protect some structure, uh, but you're going to have to show uh, in some cases that you've had no effect on the flood water. So let's see what happens uh, when we put these flood defenses in place. Uh, could it possibly have an effect on the LA River itself? Let's turn them on and see. So we can just uh, cut a section here and uh, zoom in on this one and you can see the effect that you might have had. Um, if you're in a no rise zone, uh, then you're going to have to be very careful. Now for you conspiracy theorists out there, I don't know why, but these look like letters. So tell me, what does this mean? Looks like some sort of code, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's move on down uh, down the river here and uh, see what else we can find. So let's pull up uh, Google Earth again. Um, let me just show you. I know Gilligan's Island was actually filmed, I think, in the 60s, but uh, it was more popular in syndication in the 70s. Uh, that's when I used to watch it. Uh, let's have a look uh, along the L.A. River again at something else that's right alongside of it. Um, this building right here is called Gilligan's Lagoon. And they say on their website that uh, it's because it's built on the location of Gilligan's Lagoon uh, back in the day. But uh, have a look at this photo here. Um, looks like the bulk of the lagoon, uh, when you look at this right here, there's the lagoon where a lot of this was filmed. Um, and it looks like that one was, uh, a good chunk of it went here where they literally uh, paved paradise and put up a parking lot. So uh, yeah, I didn't really have uh, any heck raz features to show you here other than just to yeah, just point out as you're watching some of these things like, uh, you know, looking through the backyard of uh, the Brady Bunch house or uh, looking at a Gilligan's Island scene, uh, you may not realize that the uh, LA River is right there in their backyard. So let me pull up um, Raz Mapper again, um, and let's uh, keep going along the LA River and see what else we can find. Again, we're here in the 70s now, um, doing some 70s movies, uh, TV shows, uh, and let's let's see if we can find anything else familiar. Um, as as you go through and look at this terrain, though, um, sometimes you'll see uh, things that are not real, and sometimes things that are real, uh, like right here. You see this little uh, hole in the ground. Um, you know what? What? What is that? What's going on here? Um, is this a real feature, or um, is that something that's just uh, left over in the terrain? Some artifact of how they shot the lidar. And sometimes it's uh, worth having a look at um, the at, at Google Earth and um, or any available aerial imagery to um, see what else might be going on there. So this one here, if I go to that same spot again, we just went there along the LA River and let's find that same spot here and see what we've got down there um, on the pavement. And what you'll see there is that uh, little divot that you saw in the ground in Raz Mapper, uh, this one right here actually happens to line up uh, with a storm drain uh, that's right in that same spot. Now, this is something I wanted to point out with Heck Raz. I hear uh, that Chicago District is funding some uh, the the ability to add the storm drains to some future version of Heck Raz, but in the meantime, it may 
take a couple of hacks to be able to put some storm drains in your model. Now, I, I wouldn't recommend putting a storm drain network uh, in HECRAS, but if you've got a couple of pipes uh, that are interconnected that don't uh, follow the typical rules for uh, flood control culverts and things like that, uh, you can still incorporate those with a couple of hacks. Now, one obvious uh, problem with uh, storm drains is that uh, a culvert invert um, cannot be below ground. So we would have to lower the ground around that. And what makes that nice uh, here in uh, the new terrain uh, modification tools is that you can uh, very quickly go in and put some pits uh, into your model. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If I turn on this uh, terrain modification layer, I've added a couple of pits to this, maybe a meter or two below the ground, uh, something that lines up with where these storm drains, um, the, the, the pipes, uh, pipe inverts would be. Um, if I start editing this layer, I can now select this and copy any feature and paste that feature anywhere I'd like. And I can find other uh, pits around. And I think if I, zoom around here, you'll see uh, at some of these other intersections, I've found some other ones as well. So um, again, this is uh, not recommended for a full network, uh, but one thing I've done here is to just put in some pipes and you can see here, um, where I've got these uh, 2D SA area connections. I've drawn a pipe from one inlet to the other, uh, kept it down below ground, and have these all coming in at the same place. Now, again, generally for a culvert and HECRAS, you get one inlet, one outlet, and it cannot be below ground. No changes can happen below ground. So I've got to actually get the ground down lower, so this is open channel flow here. So again, pressurizing these things is not necessarily going to work, uh, but if, uh, if you've got a complex network, but this does allow you to drain things uh, subsurface, and you You'll see here, I'll turn on the results and show you that um, we can actually get this functioning with an outfall into the LA River. So here we are again along the LA River. Now this is in the Warner Brothers lot, so I've named these uh, pipes. Uh, this is the Pretty Little Liars uh, High School here, uh, Gilmore Girls Studio, um, or the stage right there, and then I think Ellen films right there for her show. And so we brought all these in uh, and we will bring it out uh, to the LA River. So if I bring up RAS Mapper, um, you can see here, I've just got this uh, fairly simple network, uh, but I wanna just stop it after a couple time steps. I'm uh, putting some flow into each of these storm drains here, not adding any flow here, just to show you that it works. Um, the flow is coming in from all of these pipes and coming out into the LA River here. And then we'll just bring in the rest of the flood along the way. And um, these things will continue to function and will suck flow um, out. Now, there's one other thing you could do here uh, with some of the new features in HECRAS, which is to actually just remove flow uh, using an internal boundary condition. So um, let me show you that, uh, an example of that as well. So let me turn off my background. Uh, you can see how boring my real background is here. Um, before we dive into um, sucking flow out through storm drains using uh, negative inflows, I wanted to point out that this is actually a very special culvert. Um, so it's time for another pop quiz. What is so special about this particular storm drain? And here's a hint. So time's up. So. So you think you can tell what it is? <laughs> um, let's uh, dive into, uh, well, I'll turn off the depth here and let's see if the uh, Google imagery will give us any hint of what's going on here. And uh, when we turn that on and zoom in on this particular storm drain, look at that. They've even pointed out this is, yep, the Wish You Were Here album cover photo location. See if uh, if this looks uh, familiar to you. So look at that. That's the Warner Brothers lot right there. And sure enough, you can see these uh, supports and uh, these buildings here. That's the same one, if that looks familiar to you. Um, let me uh, go in and show you uh, how we can then suck flow out through this very special culvert. And maybe we'll take this one into 3D as well. Um, let's go back to Google Earth to see what this looks like from the ground. So I can come down here to the ground level and uh, this is where they were standing. Um, and I think uh, they say in the album notes uh, that the, uh, the stuntman who was on fire actually burned his mustache off that day. So the uh, actual album cover shows this uh, storm drain right here. Um, you can see that, um, but uh, if you look just below it here in uh, 
uh, Google Earth, you'll see the access cover here. And just to prove to ourselves that we're in the right place, uh, the album cover again is cropped to about right there. But if you go to the photos of the photo shoot itself, uh, you'll see that one right there. So we are definitely in the right place. Now let's see, can we get this uh, storm drain uh, to suck some flow in? So I put some internal boundary conditions right there. And as I let the flow come in from all sides, um, what I've got here now is it is going into this storm drain. And uh, let me turn on the particle tracing so you can see that there. And now for our, uh, well, actually when you look at these, uh, the buildings up here, uh, what does this remind you of? If you're a hydraulic engineer, in Australia at least, anytime any floodwaters come up, it's so silty and mucky that you get a high water mark there. So um, these guys, he'll get his fire turned out here or put out. Um, if I turn this up again and uh, now submerge them, uh, the storm drain is now not taking all the flow, uh, but I've put out part of the fire here and I've matched the high water mark. So there's some calibration for you. So I know this isn't a movie clip, but it is uh, shot, uh, I think in 1975, at a movie studio. And so I've included it here in our little movie history tour. So for uh, one last stop in the 70s before we move into the 80s, let's go again to one of the most iconic uh, locations in LA for filming locations. And we've been here before, uh, but this time we'll take, uh, we'll, we'll race uh, up and down the LA River. So there are at least uh, 10 movies that have been filmed here. Um, Greece, probably uh, uh, the most famous of those. Um, what we can do here is uh, I, I do want to show you a couple of things about um, bridges and putting bridges in. Um, this is the uh, 6th Street Bridge here, which uh, has been removed, but is uh, actually still in the terrain. Um, so uh, again, we'll just take take the race as they did in the movie, come up around that big pier and back down this way. So let me pull this in uh, from 3D Viewer and we'll see um, how, we, how we go from the beginning here. Um, so I guess uh, you can see that the, the, the bridge there in the terrain and it goes all the way down. So again, you'd have to remove that uh, using the modification tools we've got before. Um, I've got a flood here in there, but let's uh, turn that off. Uh, again, they're heading up uh, along uh, the, alongside the low flow channel there. There's that big pier that uh, that you see in the movie. Um, and uh, as we go right through the wall, um, that uh, we'll come back and go up the uh, up on the bank. So as you go up on the bank there, there's that big storm drain. We'll come down and we could actually build this little ramp in uh, right here um, as he comes down across and jumps over it. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll add some flow to it as well. Um, when we come over there, uh, one thing I did want to point out is that when you make modifications uh, in the modification layers, um, they won't necessarily show up in the 3D viewer. So um, you'll have to leave that to your imagination. Um, so let's get some water going in there. And again, this is where uh, he, one, one car jumped over it and the other one ended up in the side of it. So if I pull up um, Raz Mapper here, um, you can see that the uh, bridge was in it, uh, in the terrain when they flew the LIDAR. And so that, uh, let me turn off uh, the imagery and you can see in the terrain it's there and uh, then in in the aerial photos when we turn that on um, it's uh, it's already been removed so uh, they're going to rebuild it um, I guess and um, there's some architects uh, that have worked on that and I think it, it may already be in progress um, but uh, again what I want to point out here is similar to some of the other uh, uh, places that we've looked at if you are going to have it in the terrain and you know obstructing flow and, and looking more realistic in profile view and in plan view, just make sure that the sections that you draw are up uh, along here um, away from the terrain. Otherwise, there'll be no conveyance through your bridge if you end up uh, intersecting it with the terrain. Even if it's interpolated, you'll end up uh, obstructing uh, and, and changing the rating curve for the bridge. So make sure you stay well clear of that. And sometimes I'll even just shrink the terrain down to show the right deck elevation um, and even if it's not the proper width, at least it shows up in your profile views uh, and, and your overflows and weir flows. Um, you have a reference point for that. Um, so again, um, you've got some extra tools available to you in RAS 6.0 for uh, putting these bridges in. And the terrain tools for taking it out, I actually still prefer the old method, which is to draw a cross section on the upstream side and on the downstream side and let it interpolate there rather than using polygons um, with the clone layer, as handy as that is.
So you may want to have some fun in Google Earth here. Um, it is kind of fun to do. You can find every one of these features. Um, these supports are still there. Um, you can even find the, uh, the these uh, cement blocks that he jumps over if you uh, zoom around. The uh, resolution is amazing in here. Um, you can even see um, up on these uh, transi uh, transmission towers, you can see some of them will uh, be picked up in the terrain and uh, others won't. Um, so again, well, there's Skid Row in the Cecil Hotel there in the background. Let's uh, get out of LA and fly up into the valley for our next bit um, heading into the 80s. 